Good afternoon, everyone. This is Jared Rand, and welcome to the Global Guided Meditation Call for Monday, April 18th, 2022, unless it's 3 p.m. Eastern. We'll be having a Time for Change call Wednesday night at 9 p.m., Reverse Aging Health Call, 9 p.m. Friday night, Eastern Time. For every minute that you are angry, you lose 60 seconds of happiness. For every minute that you're, that you're angry, you lose 60 seconds of happiness. Ralph, Ralph Waldo Emerson. All problems are inventions of the mind from circumstances the ego deemed undesirable in reality. There are only opportunities for soul growth, and these problems are simply superhighways to transport you to higher consciousness. So literally, when we discover we are just cruising along in divine perfection. Emotion is the vibrational energy and actual power behind our manifesting vibrations. Just look at the word e-motion. E-motion. It stands for energy in motion. E-motion, energy in motion. Thoughts and emotions arise with us simultaneously and then we allow for ourselves to feel what we are experiencing, whatever it may be. It takes our vibration to a whole new level. Experience equals thought plus feeling. If you hold back on feeling, you detract from your overall experience. Diving into and fully exploring each experience is the greatest way to open up and enhance our entire body-mind vibration. Make the commitment to start feeling the emotions you have not allowed yourself to feel. Those who cry hard, laugh hard. If you hold back from feeling something deeply negative, it becomes equally difficult to experience great joy, love, or bliss. Take the risk and experience your life fully. Let go of being in control of your feelings all the time. This opens up your body mind's energy valves and expands your overall energetic state and of course this does not mean you should verbally express every negative feeling that arises to other people like a boomerang what you throw out always comes back there is a much more enlightened way of dealing with our inner junk and here's how you go about it for every, when a situation triggers you emotionally, allow yourself to experience the feelings that arise and just sit with them. When a situation triggers you emotionally, allow yourself to experience the feelings that arise and just sit with them. Consciously breathe and relax into and through them. Ask yourself if this is something you would like someone else to throw back onto you. If yes, then express it. If not, breathe deeper into it and feel where it is physically registering in your body. Notice the sensation, the sensations that are present, and breathe into this space. Be aware of the thoughts, judgments, and images related to this feeling. Let them go and stick to relaxing into the very core of the feeling. If you feel like a volcano that is ready to burst and cannot contain your emotions, take 10 deep breaths and imagine that you are taking three giant steps back from the situation until you feel safe and calm. Visualize anything that makes you feel at peace or enhances your inner calm. If you are in a highly charged situation, it is also good to physically walk away. This allows you to detach from expressing your feelings and opens up space to experience them. 
when relating with people at home or work, take time to feel and connect with them. Be open and connected with the people you live, work, and commute with, including those who sell you food at your local supermarket. Break out of any tight, cold, emotionally protected patterns you may be in. Take the risk to express yourself emotionally with everyone from a centered conscious place. It will melt your ego's walls and keep your ego from defending itself against illusionary enemies, judgments, which it has invented in the outer world. This opens up your manifesting vibration in enormous ways. Let yourself physically and emotionally touch others and be touched by others. Give and receive more physical contact with other human beings over the next three months than you have in your entire life. Gently touch people randomly while talking with them. Let them know through your touch that you are listening and that you care. Always connect with people by looking them in the eyes when in dialogue. You ever notice that uh, some people, they'll be talking with you, but they're looking everywhere but you? I don't know about you guys, but it, it, it's, it's disconcerting. Give and receive three hugs every day minimum, and including yourself. Give hugs generously and spontaneously. When you meet someone for the first time, we invite you to open your arms and give them a warm, welcoming hug. Drop that heavy societal mask that is, is afraid of embracing other people out of fear for what they will think. Everyone needs a hug. Give a gentle, soothing hug to those people you truly love every day, such as your kids, your mate, a new friend, an old friend, distant family, close family, mom, dad, coworkers, and even your boss. Hugging your boss will really break you out of that cold, distant, frozen world you are used to living in. Most importantly, remember to allow yourself to receive a hug each time you give one. The smile on your face is the light in the window that tells people you are at home. The smile on your face is the light in the window that tells people you're at home. Author is unknown. When you are on the phone or talking in person with someone, allow for an inner and an outer smile to form. Send out many uplifting, empowering, enthusiastic comments to the person you are speaking with. So we challenge you to even practice this with that marketing guy who calls you late at night and does not listen to you at all. Give him an ounce of compassion and a smile. Every day, take the risk that others may brand you as being a ridiculously happy person. The more love, and happiness that we transmit to others, the more our bodies experience it on the way out. Generously giving joy and love, regardless of who the person is, raises your vibration to the highest levels. This joy-giving technique opens the heart chakra and turns on the manifesting juice. Practice connecting with others openly with your heart. Focus on what you like about them instead of what you don't like or want to change about them. Imagine your heart and theirs are two radiating spheres of golden light connecting through a flowing river of warm, soothing, golden, golden goodness. Relax and enjoy being with them, whoever they are. When connecting with others, be open to their opinions and suggestions about things, while also remaining independent and free in your thinking. Greet each person you meet with love and share your excitement with them about your life. Be real with them. Don't hide or withhold yourself for fear of stepping on their belief system. If people get upset by something you say or do, that is their issue that they get to deal with. 
be curious about what they are experiencing and be open to exploring what your body is feeling when they are upset or triggered. Empowering others means you let them be responsible for every feeling and experience that arises inside their body-mind, no matter what. Do not create a wall or try to shield yourself from any experience. This would make you feel cut off from the universe and your vibration. Be like a flute. Allow every emotion to play through you. A major and often overlooked secret ingredient to awakening your manifesting powers has to do with your sexual energy. Allow yourself to experience yourself as an alive, sensual, sexual being all day long. Just be radical and brave about it. For your highest manifesting vibration to awaken, you'll need to let the the sensual, sexual energy flow throughout your entire body. By letting yourself explore these sensual and sexual feelings any time they arise in any circumstance or situation, you gain the ultimate sense of freedom. This does not mean you become uncontrollably excited and overly aroused upon seeing another to the point of becoming an unconscious sex animal. Sexual freedom is a state of permission, trust, and relaxation about this natural energy which has been insanely suppressed all around the world. When you choose to be centrally alive, there is an inner openness that includes an enjoyable and safe safe exploration of your entire body. Make the life-enhancing commitment today to be centrally free to experience the sexual being you already are. This vibration raising energy will create more health, wealth, and joy in your life and others. If you are not comfortable experiencing those pleasurable sexual sensations, you are strangling your energy channels. Thus, your desires have difficulty manifesting when you experience those exotic erotic feelings within you. Your manifesting floodgates will open. Your body's six senses of touch, taste, smell, sight, hearing, and intuitive perception function more effectively when you are sexually alive. The more you allow yourself the freedom to feel life through your senses, the more connected you become with the universe and profound your manifesting powers will be. The truth is that we are all a sexual being, and we, we created We are created from sexual energy. In fact, every living person and thing on this planet was created from sexual energy. So it is a truly divine energy that creates only life. When you allow yourself to relax into and feel your sexual alive energy inside, you're letting more life pour through you. So give yourself permission every day to be totally sensually alive. When walking, talking, sitting, working, eating, and driving, be relaxed and open around the sexual area of your body. Let the sensual energy naturally flow up your spine and throughout your entire body throughout your day. The more often you do this, the more your body's energy will be open and allow you to naturally manifest your desires faster and easier. Better Keep yourself clean and bright. You are the window through which you must see the world. George Bernard Shaw. So if you will, go to the place where you're not going to be interrupted. And I'm sure that we all are. And the first thing, all is the first thing that we do is relax our bodies. Head to toe, inside out. How do you how do you do that? What, one simple way, not complicated, no gurus, no books, no computer courses. How do you do that? Breath. Your breath. The breath is the magic. It is divine positive energy. We come into these bodies as gods. 
We power them up. And the lungs produce the oxygen. We bring in the oxygen so we support the body. That's one of the elementals there. So you correlate and you understand that the breath is super powerful. Calms and relaxes the body head to toe. Focuses, eases, releases, strengthens, supports, many things. So when we go into focusing on our breath, e I mean real easy in through the nose slowly and real easy and slowly out the mouth. And you listen to the breath. And as you do that, you move out of the ego mind and the subconscious mind. You move out of them. You still them, which means you don't participate in them. You watch them, but you don't judge them. You learn by watching. So that's the only way you're going to master them. And being in the now, is focusing on the breath. When you're in the now, you don't have the mind chatter that we all do have 24-7. And we put out, each of us put out over 60,000 thoughts a day. Now, it doesn't mean that we know every one of the thoughts that we send out to the universe. And not only that, we have tens of millions to tens of billions of thoughts that fly by us like clouds in the sky. These aren't our thoughts, they're programs. And they're from every, every living and past living being that's ever been on and above and below this planet. So they, they, those are tricky ones, see? Because there's times where they just come in. Remember, your thoughts go out. They go out. You send your thoughts out to the universe. You don't receive thoughts. You send thoughts. The ego mind sends you thoughts. And all of these program thoughts, Sometimes you go, well, that's that got to be my thought. It's, my name's connected to it. That's my thought. And it isn't. That's why sometimes when we embrace those thoughts and we create them into reality and experience them, we sometimes feel a little uneasy or, or discomforting because it doesn't feel right. You ever done that? Eh, this doesn't feel right. That's why. So... And we do float off. All of us do. There's, there, we, we will eventually float off into different thoughts while we're in the now. And this is when we remind ourselves to be gentle, kind, generous, and humble with ourselves at all times and to be in the highest of the highest high and the deepest of the deepest deepest and the purest of the purest purest eternal love. This way, when we float off, we know it. We're aware of it. And catch ourselves and say, I'll just, I will focus on my breath. And I'll be in the now 3,000% of the time, which is every time. In the now, it, it is at first, it seems a little uh, not right, right? Because the majority of the population of this planet spends most of its time in the past or the future, future or the past. Very rarely are they ever in the now. And that's where all the suffering is on the planet. So the now is paramount. You could not answer questions if you were ge when, when you're generally in the now, genuinely in the now. You could not answer questions from others saying, what, what are you going to do tomorrow? What are you going to do tonight? Now, what, where are you going to be five years from now? What do you have planned? You see how different it is, how different things are? how difficult it is for many to go with the flow, downstream thinking, in the boat with no oars, let the current take you, okay? rather than you know, fighting and churning against the current and you know, just digging and digging and digging and climbing and trying to get to the top to, to beat the current. You see the difference there? And most of us will try to beat the current. Few of us won't, because we've learned. We just let go. We let it flow. We have confidence in ourselves, faith in ourselves, the gods that we are. 
we also have faith and, and confidence in the universe. So we go with the flow. Things always work out. It's the only time they don't is when you don't go with the flow, that you fight the current, that you dig and fight and grimace and get wet, fighting the current, going against the current. So it's a choice. But it's not, for a lot of people, it's not that easy, okay? Because they're not familiar with it. They're not comfortable with it. Because they don't have faith, enough faith or confidence in themselves, nor the universe, as their best friend. How many, how many people on this planet do trust themselves and trust others? So remember, the body is like a magnetic sponge, and it attracts everything. That doesn't necessarily mean that we know everything. We don't take inventory of all the things the body absorbs. A lot of the times we're not even consciously aware of what the body is absorbing. And, you know, these are emotions, feelings, anxieties, frustrations, angers, hatreds, and the body absorbs those. And it stores those in different parts of the body. It builds up. This is why stress is the number one destroyer of these bodies we're in. So you let it go, but when you move in, see, when you move in, and now all that stuff's gone. It doesn't exist. And if it surfaces, then you face it off. You know, give it a big body hug and say, how you doing? And see, see why it's there, why it's there. And you'd be amazed. You know when your body is relaxed to the extent where you feel uncumbered, right? Unencumbered. Where you don't feel heavy and you don't, you're not worrying and stressing and fearing about whatever it is you're worrying, stressing, and fearing about. And you're focused only on the now. This is the journey within. It isn't the journey out there. We've done that for countless lifetimes. But discovering who and what we are is a whole different ballgame for this civilization and a much higher vibrational frequency in existence. Do you ever imagine what this planet would be like in the event that all of us loved ourselves and each other and we spent our time with that energy, rather than hate, anger, fear, frustration, revenge, what, what would the planet be like then? You wouldn't recognize it. So the body relaxed and in the now and know how to get back to the now. To get to the now when you go out of it, it's perfect. We can practice over and over again. So we get it. And then the practicing becomes like automatic. Now, looking in the body that you're in, you will see seven lights. And the lights go from the tailbone, top of the head. On this planet, they're called chakras. The definition of chakra is wheel. These are wheels of light. They're spirit etheric energy. We, the gods, are spirit etheric energy, omnipotently powerful. And these colors are so vibrant that you, there's not a color on, on this planet that matches them. And they're connected to the bodies, organs, different all the organs, motion, character, personality, attitude, beliefs, all across the board, insecurities. And we, the gods, flow through them. So in reality, as we take the inner journey for the rest of our existence, 
we discover that we know these bodies inside and out, head to toe, right down to the quantum quark. Our amnesia stops us from understanding. This is why we're always trained to seek external authority. It's in that amnesia thing, <laughs> excuse me, that amnesia thing that we all have. But it's a rediscovery. And it's a choice. I'm going to rediscover the God that I am within this body. I'm going to go within my inward journey. I'm going to trust implicitly in the universe, myself. I will have faith in the universe and myself. I will not doubt. I know I'll always be taken care of. The universe is my best friend. So we will learn that we are the power of healing, these bodies, gods that we are. And eventually we will learn how to immediately heal them in the blink of the eye. Now picture yourself standing on three paths. You're in the center path. There's three there. And the one in the center that you're on currently is the now. One on the left is the past. One on the right is the future. You notice how they've been formed. There's, there's trees that have formed a, a, a canopy over each path, and the, and the canopy is, is golden, shimmering, the leaves, the bark, the branches of the trees. The path itself is a brilliant emerald green flaming grass. It looks like grass. And the thing that you notice the most is that when you look at the path on the left, the, the, the past, it's very worn. It's, it's been used a lot. And then you look at the one on the right, the future, and it's similar. It's been used a lot. The one you're standing on the now looks almost brand new. Because the ego mind keeps the majority of us out of the now. It will do anything to keep us out of the now. It doesn't exist in the now. So therefore, it will fight tooth and nail to keep you out of the now. So we reminisce, we have memories, and we have fun with them. And every now and then we get nostalgia or something sparks it. It could be anything. You drive in your car, and you're spurt, you're, you go through an area or a song, or a conversation. And so you visit it, and we have these massive libraries. Our, our subconscious mind is the library. It stores everything. Not just your stuff, but everything else. And it is so big, it's so vast, you, you walk into it, you can't see walls, because it's so vast. All the past lives, all the future lives, everything in between. But we'll go in there, and we'll open the door, turn on the light, and we'll get some books and some movies and some pictures. And we'll sit in an easy chair, and we'll, we'll look at We'll watch some of the movies, and some of the, we'll read some of the books, and we'll look at some of the pictures. And we'll reminisce at how wonderful it was, and the experience was wonderful and great. And sometimes we'll even look at the ones that weren't so great to remind us what not to do. But then we put it all away, we turn off the light, we shut the door, and we move forward in life. And on occasion, we'll revisit. But some of us, and I believe that it's not conscious, it's unconscious, will stay there so long that they end up bringing that past into a future that doesn't exist, creating that future out of that past, and reliving that past in that future. And then they find themselves saying, no matter what we do, we always seem to end up here. That's why. Now, we all go in the future. Even though we're creating our future in the now, we still go in that we think is a future. So, And we want to know things. We want to know what's going to happen a year from now, or six months from now, or a week from now, or two weeks from now. We'd like to know. 
day. We don't go with the flow in that context because we're, we're pushing. We want to know. We're hurrying. We want to know. We want to know when we're going to meet our, our uh, lifelong romantic partner. We want to know when we're going to have enough money to enjoy our lives. We want to know when we're not going to be sick anymore so we can enjoy our lives. Want to know when we're going to get that house or that car or whatever it may be. We want to know. So sometimes we go out and we we look for external authority to tell us a lot of the things that we want to know. And they may tell you. Psychics, astrologers, all of, all of the different external authorities about you, about anybody. And so they go through things in the star charts and the astrology and the crystals and the tarot and everything and the pendulums, all, all of that stuff. And they come up with a, an analysis basically saying that, you know, this is going to happen in the next three months and you're going to you know, be looking to experience this and that. Now, there's two avenues, those who look at it and just kind of go, eh. And then there's others who will sit there and say they'll believe it. They will, they will embrace it. And by embracing it and believing it, they'll do they'll want and they'll do a few things. They will get out of their own way and have faith and trust that it will occur in its own time, or get in your way and block it. Now the ones that don't block it, it happens. And they're blown away. And they say, Wow, you were right. You hit it right on the head. And the whole the whole point was they manifested it. And it happened because they didn't interfere. So there's different variances that we, uh, that we will do. And it all depends on which variant we pick or choose. And then the ones that it doesn't happen for get disappointed and frustrated and suffer. And the whole point of this is you're creating your future in the now. So you literally structure what kind of a future that you care to have. And letting the universe and everything flow and you just you flow with it you don't fight it you flow and watch what happens now we enter these bodies because we know that we are consciously aware to a certain extent consciously aware means that we know that we are of and from the highest of the highest high deepest of the deepest deepest and purest the purest purest eternal love that's consciously could be consciously aware to a certain extent. And we know that we enter these bodies and we power these bodies up. We are the heaven. Heaven is not a place. That is a matrix trap. Heaven is you, the God. And so we are heaven. We enter the body. The body is earth, heaven on earth. Every step we take, we are literally aware that we're creating paradise. Not only that, we're shining our light. What is the light? Love. Which is what we're made of, pure consciousness. And so we flood it anywhere. You can direct it anywhere you choose. You could be sitting in your room and direct it to somebody uh, 3,000 miles away on this planet, and it will affect them. So your love is endless and has no boundaries. It doesn't have a distance limitation. It's eternal. It is infinity and beyond. So you picture that. You figure that if you were to understand more with the journey within, and you discovered before you left, before you decided to leave the body, that you're the light. Not the body, but you, the God, are the light. The love. So then you leave the body, and you enter sacredness of space as the God that you are. It's a, it's a ball of energy. It's a brilliant light. It's unmatched. And you know you're the light. I mean, for goodness sakes, it's crazy, right? So then another light comes along, and it entices you to enter it. But you've known, you've discovered, and you've gotten out of your amnesia and said, I don't need a light. I am the light. Why would I enter a light? I wouldn't. So you stay away from the light. So 
So that's if you discover. It's up to each of us to, do, to discover that while we're in these physical forms. Some of us have had thousands of lifetimes and have never discovered it. But remember, we're infinity and beyond. We're, et- we're eternal and forever, the gods that we are. Our journey is endless. So if you were to take a starship off this planet, you flew out far enough where the planet looked like a basketball, you looked at the planet, and it glowed. I mean, goodness sakes, we've got 8 billion gods inhabiting physical forms, humanoid forms, on and above below this planet Earth guy, Ari, on this now. And then you would look at all the lights around it in the universe. It would be like comparing a lit candle in a dark room it would be it would pale in comparison dim 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 now since we know which we're consciously aware of with the love that we are and we know there are parts of us the gods that we are that are asleep and they're not going to wake up. I mean, they'll wake up in their own time. But we deeply love them no different than we deeply love the parts of ourselves that are awake. Now, all of that is in all that there is, ever has been, ever will be, ever beyond and forever of light energy beings. This is the archangels, cherub and seraphim archetypes. Ascended Masters, Kuan Yin, Maitreya, Buddha, Lakshmi, Ganesh, Gaia, St. Germain, Christ, Elmoria, Mandantia, Pell, Thoth, Yahweh, Yeshua. This is the all of our loved ones who have ascended out of body in this lifetime and all lifetimes that we've inhabited. It is all the off-worlders, celestials, and galactics. It is everything and beyond and nothing and beyond. All the inhabitants of inner earth, uh, a hollow earth, a garth and beneath earth. It's endless. No separation. Now the ascended masters, they have ascended into physical form. They have mastered physical form. They have ascended out of physical form. They hold pure consciousness, God form. We have ascended into physical form. We are in the process of mastering physical form. We are creating our experiences to perfect our creations. Now, the archangels, cherub of seraphim archetype, they're a civilization that vibrated at a different frequency than we do, so we don't see them like we see each other. But we meet with them and we interact with them a lot more than we realize. That the gods within their bodies and the gods within ours are one. There's no separation. Now they deliver messages and we meet with them and we don't, it's not like, oh, oh, I'm going to meet with an angel today. It's like somehow something occurs and there's a, um, you, you meet a stranger. And usually they start the conversation, and you're kind of looking around, oh, okay. And then then you have this conversation. It could be a few minutes. It could be 20 minutes. Who knows? And and then you have familiarity because you meet a stranger, and you talk with them for a long time. It's as if they're, and here's the one, as if they're a part of the part of yourself that you really enjoy. Yeah? Remember, we're all reflections of each other. So you don't, you don't really, it doesn't hit you until afterwards. And you say, you know what? I was an angel. And you feel bliss. And they know we have amnesia. So they're constantly helping us remember. And the, the main message that they deliver in many different ways, aren't you absolutely, isn't it magna glorious? To be alive in these bodies?
And it is. And it's absolutely blissful. But since we don't have a starting point of comparison, because we're amnesia, how do we, how do we know the difference? And every time our memories are zapped, how do we, how can we compare, you know, to know to the appreciation of being in these bodies? Well, we don't. That's why the journey within is so essential to rediscover who and what we are. But then we, you, you, there is recall that comes in, and that is is that you begin to realize is that the God that you are isn't physical. It is not physical, okay? Not, not like your body. And so the body affords the soul to experience physical life, picking up things, making love, kissing, hugging, holding hands, walking, running fishing, laughing, crying, eating, drinking, water. I mean, existing, touch, feel, emotion. We don't have that when we're not in the body. It's not there. We don't see through these eyes. It's a different ballgame. It's our natural state of being. So, we want to make sure that we're focused in deep gratitude all the time for having these bodies. To, to that sustain us, the gods that we are, to experience this wonderful life. Now, they can surround any one of us at any one time. Because of their vibrational frequency, they can hold a large number in a small area. It would be 10,000, 10 million or more. And you want to ask them in a blink of the eye, they'll be all around you, and you'll be in bliss. Now, light energy game on this planet, different light spectrums, red, infrared, violet, ultraviolet, super green, blue, it goes on. So we don't see these. We don't experience these. We don't see them and we don't experience them. But they're there. But there is a group that we all we that are the bodies we're in and very dependent on a part of this group. Fairies, sprites, elves, gnomes, dwarves, trees, trolls, magics, elementals, earth, air, water, fire, ether, wood, the mermaid, the dolphin, the whale, the Pegasus, the unicorn, centaur, centaur, minotaur. But there you ask your body. It's it's absolute. You ask your body, can you survive in that body? Can you, the God, stay in that body without air, without water, without fire, without earth, without wood, without ether? No. You can't. You'd, we would have to leave the body. This is how dependent these bodies are on the elementals. Big time. This is why we're always in deep gratitude. Always. Now, the off-worlders, galactic, the celestials, over a thousand species, civilizations, travel through this solar system every day. And remember, we have over 170 planets in the solar system. And trillions throughout the universe is every day. We are familiar with a small group. Pleiadians, Syrians, Arcturians, Andromedans, felines, Zeta Reticuli, Anunnaki, Nords, Greys, Draco, Reptilian, Golden Pyramid, Avion. Now this particular group has been assisting us in our evolution, enlightenment, ascension, freeing ourselves from our own self-imposed bondage and our own self-imposed slavery. Now none of us are separate. The separation is the illusion with these bodies. Hundreds of millions of us and the numbers continue throughout existence and beyond, Googleplexes, 
One Googleplex fills this universe with not even one square inch of sacred space to spare. These are trillions of Googleplexes, and we're all one. And the parts that are awake, consciously aware, focus on this planet and its complete liberation from lower dark matter, spiral matter frequencies. The pure evil that has literally ensnared this planet for tens of thousands of years. And we are now eliminating it. We're all in full compassion, non-judgment, non-ego, non-negativity, stillness of mind, gentleness, kindness, generosity, and humbleness, tranquility, benevolence, prosperity, abundance. And we're all one, and we're all God, and we're all love. And our God force love light energy is in all that there is, ever has been, ever will be, ever beyond and forever, continues to intensify, grow, and expand. We immediately form a white fire circle of light around the equator of this planet Earth, Gaia, Arya, and this now. This white fire ring circle of light emanates from the gods that we all are within these bodies, the pure love. Highest vibrational frequency, highest of the highest high. And we're flooding the planet, permeating it, saturating it with this love. There's, there's nothing that has not been saturated and permeated with this love on it, in it, above it, and below it, and infinity and beyond. We begin to ascend above the planet, immediately met with this massive ocean of glitter. Now, it's not like you would depict an ocean of glitter on this planet. So we, pick, we take out what we can identify with and expand upon it. So you look at a grand finale fireworks display, but this one is a trillion times more intense and a trillion times larger. And then we look at a laser light show grand finale and it's the same thing its intensity is a trillion times more a trillion times larger and then we look at the ga- the ballroom globe that floods light as you shine the light on it it floods everywhere it is it is a reflection so but this one is, is a trillion times more intense a trillion times larger so then we combine them all in a massive crescendo and that comes close to describing the ocean of glitter and we look at the reflective points, which are everywhere, and we notice these micro, little tiny, perfectly etched microscopic bears. We enter them and we discover that all of us are teaching and learning from each other, with each other, all the time. And so we're all, all of us are inhabiting different physical forms, see? And it's constant, infinity and beyond. And we inhabit them to experience them. They are created so that we can inhabit them and experience them. Remember, those who came before us are now creating universes. We are learning. Have they stopped learning? No. Now, the tree... Separation again, illusion here on this planet, right? So you look at the tree, you look at the body of the tree, you look at your body, you go, well, the tree is separate from me. The rock is separate from me. The dog, the cat, the mouse, the cow, the moose, the bird, separate from me. Does it make sense that each one of those contain a God? And we're all one. So how can we be separate? The illusion is the body, the physical form. All of them experiencing different physical forms. All of them teaching us. We teaching them. It goes on and on. So the God enters the tree, powers up the tree, gives the tree energy, life. The other gods who are inhabiting other forms of physical forms, like the elementals, so on and so forth, sustain the tree so the God can stand to experience it. It's like that with anything. And you really want to know what it's like to be something other than the body you're in, to be and experiencing in it? What is it like to be a rock? What is it like to be a tree? You focus on that with your breath and the now and silence 
and listen, you will for a brief moment know it exactly what it's like to be whatever it is you were thinking you would like to know what it's like to be. Now we're immediately met with the Emerald Green Flaming Healing Light of Archangel Raphael. This is a column of light that we created. It reminds us all the gods that we are within these bodies. We're the power of healing. We're then met with the violet blue purple flaming light of Archangel Michael. This is a column of light that we created to remind us all the gods that we are within these bodies, that we are the power, omnipotent power, strength, and resolve. Then we're met with the white fire. This is the column of light that we created to remind us all that from head to toe inside and out, we are completely protected. No lower dark matter, survival matter frequencies, no possessions, no attachments. Ever. Ever, ever. The lower dark matter, the, those low frequencies cannot sustain themselves around us. As long as we keep that vibrational frequency where it's at, or higher, they'll vaporize if they come near us, so they stay away. Yet, only you, only you, only you have the power that if, whether consciously you decide to lower your vibrational frequency, whether consciously or unconsciously, through hatred, anger, greed, fear, manipulation, anxiety, worry, stress, jealousy or envy, revenge, you will lower your vibrational frequency low enough to create a breach in your white fire armor, enough so to allow all the lower dark matter, survival matter frequencies to come flooding in, then the, the possibilities are there, the demon possession, attachment, and many other things. Now, if you do decide to do this, you're immediately met with a double column of light. First part of this column is the purple transmuting flame. We created this part of the column of light to remind us all that we can bring in the purple transmuting flame, we can transmute all these lower dark matter, survival matter frequencies into neutralized substance, sending them to pure consciousness, where they are no more. We are then met with the second part of this column of light, which is the violet ray. We created this part of the column of, of light to remind us all that we can bring in the violet ray right behind the purple transmuting flame, cleanse and purify the area where these lower dark matter, survival matter frequencies work, Sealing the breach in our white fire armor, restoring our vibrational frequencies to the highest of the highest high, deepest of the deepest deepest, and purest of the purest purest, eternal love, gratitude, and peace. We are then met with the golden white pink light. This is a column of light that we created, the gods that we are in these bodies, to remind us all that we are the sun. We are the sunlight. We are the rain and the rainbows. We are the sunsets and the sunrises. We are the oceans, the rivers, the lakes, and the streams. We are the sky and the clouds. We are the trees and the forests, the soils, the animals. We're everything. Everything is us. So when we, when we, as we've been trained through amnesia, we have this amnesia, and we've been taught that believe that look at that sunset isn't that beautiful and it is because it's you the God within that body so when we begin to recognize this through the heart mind not the head not the ego mind then we'll always identify ourselves that's the God that I am ocean front that's the god that i am this civilization is moving towards that understanding
and we continue to ascend above the planet, some of us who are carrying physical form decide to step out of it and hover effortlessly above it. The reason we do this is because it's really fun and we can. We come into immediate contact with this massive crystal and light tower. We created this tower. It's larger than the solar system and beyond. Now in the center of the column of the tower, we see this massive oblong sphere. In the center of the sphere, we see this golden white bowl of light. It, in turn, is surrounded by multicolored rings of light that seem to go to infinity and beyond. We discover that the golden white bowl of light is the highest of the highest high, deepest of the deepest deepest, and purest of the purest purest, eternal love. Then comes well-being, gratitude, gentleness, kindness, generosity, and humbleness, bliss, joy, peace, tranquility, benevolence, massive prosperity, and massive abundance. In all of this, we discover is but a reflection of the gods that each and every one of us are in these bodies. Now at the top of this column, we designed it so that the golden ocean can come cascading down 360 degrees, 24-7 infinity beyond. What is the golden ocean? Pure, deep, eternal love. Highest of the highest high vibrational frequencies. And we're flooding, saturating, and permeating this planet. You can watch it through your heart, mind's motion picture whenever you choose. In the now. It's flooding everything. And there's nothing that isn't flooded or saturated by it. It's pure, deep, eternal love. Now, we are drops of this golden ocean. We also hold the essence of this golden ocean. Golden ocean is a drop, drops of the golden ocean. And the only illusion is separation. We see our meditative sphere. It's that center circle. We all created this sphere over four years ago. It holds nearly 1,900 of our meditations in perpetual motion. These meditations, we do them every day, seven days a week. Every day, without fail, seven days a week for the last, over four years. Sometimes twice a day. And they, they continue to grow and intensify and expand. And they're flooding this planet. And you can see why that this meditative sphere can be seen, heard, and felt, and all that there is, ever has been, ever will be, ever beyond, and forever. And it continues to expand, intensify, and grow. Flooding and saturating, permeating this planet on and in and above and below it. You can see through your heart mind's motion picture, in silence, in the now, focus on your breath. You can see the matter, the dark matter. You can see it literally leaving the planet, all over the surface of the planet, leaving it's being almost like a vacuum. You can see it going up. And when you, when you watch it go up, you, look at the, you, you think you're going to look at the sky, but what you see is this brilliant, bright light everywhere. And you see tinges of pink and gold, and it's kind of shimmering. And so as you watch the dark matter go straight up, all over the planet it's being evaporated, and it, it hits this. It actually goes into this light, and it's gone. It's vaporized permanently. And, and you, you experience a euphoric bliss, a joy, a release. If you really, really care to know what it looks like, the liberation of this planet of all the pure evil, that's what it looks like. And it's going on right now. And nothing, nothing 
It is the highest of the highest, highest power ever beyond the trip. Now we can step into these meta meditations. We can step in uh, into anything we choose. We can step in and experience all of these meditations through our heart minds, motion picture. Not the head, not the ego. Acceptance will make you more relaxed and at ease. If self-acceptance comes in a trickle or a downpour, then that are right for you. Acceptance is the key to releasing all suffering and issues of avoidance or attachment. Allow yourself to accept everything that occurs today. That is not about being a doormat. It is not about being a doormat for the world. This is about following your heart with inspired actions all day long and accepting whatever shows up in your experience. Become an acceptaholic who accepts everything exactly as they are and yourself exactly as you are. I'll join you in meditation and return to close us out.
take an easy breath in, slowly through the nose, and an easy breath out, slowly through the mouth. Be still. When meditating, if you experience an increasing feeling of lightness, go with it. Weave it into your body. Ground it into your chakras. It is best to stay centered and integrate your experiences than to get lost in the thoughts they produce. The greatest meditators blend heaven and earth at all times with a deep knowingness that they are this connected infinite source of goodness. Meditate as often as you like, staying with the thought, letting everything be exactly as it should be. After you are done, soak in this feeling, idea, and experience through the rest of your day. Take this with you for the rest of the day into the evening, night, and following morning. We will return here Tuesday, April 19th, 2022, 3 p.m. Eastern, to continue our global guided meditation call.